and my imagination. This collection is inspired by the city, and one section of it deals with it directly. I have to confess that I always found it difficult to write an academic essay about Hong Kong, even though my academic publications exceed by far my published poetry. And I wrote about other cities, New York, Cairo, Alexandria, but not Hong Kong. Somehow, Hong Kong makes me write poetry. It's a nice digression. I love it, but I also fear it, because I think poetry is a dangerous domain. This collection of poems is divided into four sections. The first one is entitled Imperfections. And its major theme is that beauty is necessarily imperfect. We do not fall in love with a perfect woman or a perfect man. I think we fall in love precisely because of imperfections and flaws. The second part is entitled The City. And this is where I talk directly about Hong Kong. Some of you might know that I recently posted a poem on Facebook entitled Hong Kong Talks About Herself, 2019. Samuel Chan, my poetry collection launched this evening, was written long before the protest started. Excuse me. But I think you would read quite a number of signs and symptoms that predicted the illnesses of Hong Kong and its newly acquired awareness of its identity crisis. The third part is entitled Woman, and it deals with the question of what a woman is. Not the Freudian question of what a woman wants, but what a woman is. And I'm sure feminists might say, how dare you talk about what a woman is? How can any man know what a woman is? Now, of course, they are right, and I do not define what a woman is. I only grapple with the impossibility of definition. Uh, you will find many interesting ideas, I believe, and it's best to let everyone read in their own way. The fourth section is entitled Alternative Histories. What you might find very interesting in it, I think, is the idea of who gets to speak. Who gets to speak in a poem? So, in here, uh, speakers include writers like Edgar Allan Poe, historical figures like Henry VIII and Abraham's wife, literary characters from Shakespeare, Ibsen, Charlotte Brontë, and others, and imaginary people too, my imaginary friends. This art twists official history on purpose. So it questions the meta-narrative that we call history. I would like to thank Jeremy Tambling for writing an insightful preface to the collection. I'd like to thank Vaughan, Rapatahana, and Sayyid Buddha for writing advanced comments here. Um, I would also like to thank uh, the Excellencies, of course, the Consul General for honoring us today with their presence. This is my boss, by the way, right there. <laughs> <laughs> and she's the most active and hard-working CG I have seen in my life. <laughs> I'd like to tell my students, some of whom are here, with us today. Thanks for coming so much and uh, I hope that you wouldn't be shocked by what's <laughs> written here. This is of course the other side of me. <laughs> but uh, those of you who actually attended, uh, attended so many courses will be able to make a lot of connections between what's written here and what I say in class. Last but not least, I'd like to thank my dear wife course for providing me with a tiny space in our house to write, so I <laughs> uh, but more for tolerating my bookishness and my immersion in literature, much more than reality. But one of us is more pragmatic and I'm very thankful to that. Thank you. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy reading the poems. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Alfred.